Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about spreading yourself thin or specializing in one thing. So let's get into it. So the question in question today was pretty much a story and the story goes, so Frederick, I've just recently graduated from college and I got my first internship where I worked at a consultancy for a while and now I'm wondering whether or not I should stay at this consultancy. My concern is that I get to work on a lot of different languages for very short periods of time but I also noticed that in my region there are many companies who are looking specifically for Java and C Sharp developers and although I love the company and I think it's fun to work there I w don't want to put myself in a position where I'm a jack of all trades and I don't really know anything that well and then I don't get a job later on. What should I do? So the short answer here is that you need to determine the level of proficiency you gain within these different languages. Let me explain that a little bit. So one thing I've said in the past, and this is still true, is that if you want to be flexible as a software developer, it's a very good idea to have a little bit of width in your knowledge base. Now, width, width doesn't necessarily mean that you know absolutely everything. It's just that, as an example, if you are very highly specialized in, let's say, C, well, then unless you can find a C position in a job or a job that just works with C, then you're kind of screwed. However, if you expand that and you say, oh, well, I know C and I know a little bit of C++, well, if even if you know just a little bit of C++, uh, that actually opens up the possibility for you to work in a company that use C++ because you have a foundation knowledge in something and a working understanding of the thing that they are using. Even though you're not a master in that thing, it still opens up the possibility for you to do something. And the thing that is important to know here is that this very much comes down to one part, your perspective on yourself and your perspective of what is mastership and how much time you've actually spent learning the foundational skills. Now, this I hope will feel a little bit like a big reveal to some of you who have been watching a few of the videos that I've made regarding core skills. This is what it's about. <sighs> you see, if you have core skills, you actually know how to program really well and you don't just learn a specific tool that means that you now have the ability to tra to transition into whatever it is you want now the problem with this is that it's very tricky for you to know when you are solid in one thing and then it's when it's time to move over to the next. And this is the thing that makes it very hard for me to answer this question for the subscriber. Because if you look at it from the perspective of diversity, working with a lot of different languages is a good thing. But this is a junior developer and depending on how much time they actually gain f in each of these different projects, because I think she mentioned that they work in some kinds in Python and sometimes in TypeScript and Node and so forth and in sometimes it's like PHP or something like that like they're kind of switching around the languages now this is not a bad thing necessarily but it is a bad thing if you're not allowed enough time to allow your knowledge to settle because the th problem with being a little bit too diverse early on is that you dev never really get to settle into your core skills because you're constantly trying to adapt to the new language. Even though the core skills are very trans translatable between different things, you can, in, as an example, go from C to C++ or go from Java to C Sharp. I mean, you don't even have to go that extreme. I mean, if I want to do PHP development and I'm a Java developer, the transition is again sort of the same it's a very famous it's i'm not saying a famous quote but there was a quote a developer used to i watched used to say, say that a lot of people say that they know a lot of different programming languages but if you know the different flavors of how we do traditional software development in languages that are very similar to java and c sharp you don't know different languages you know different dialects of a language and I think that's a more accurate way of saying it because it's uh, like if you go from between two languages and they're sort of inspired by the same paradigms it's almost 
the same thing. I, they are syntactical differences, but it's not going to be a problem for you to adopt them. The, as a senior developer, it's actually not that tricky to move one from one thing to the to the other. It's not going to come for free, but it's going to be very simple in general terms. Now, how uh, now as a junior developer though, you're still in a position right now where you're trying to just get those basics. So this makes it puts me in a very bad position because the only advice I can give the subscriber is that you have to decide for yourself if you feel that you're actually you're actually learning something because there are positive there there are many benefits to being in an environment where you get to try a lot of stuff that's a very good thing and what's even more important i would say is that you actually enjoy working there because if you're enjoying the work that you do that should be your primary primary concern because if you enjoy the work odds are that you will actually stick by it and get develop your skills and more than if you're in a job where you're not so happy or you might not enjoy it all that much but on the flip side if you feel that you're in this environment then sure it's a nice social environment but you feel like you continuously struggle to just settle into let's say that you're working on python and you don't really feel that you get the hang of it until you need to go over to PHP. PHP and then you work on PHP things and then you feel like ah oh, you're sort of getting it but you don't have time really and now you need to go over to work in Node or stuff like that that's really bad for you because th this is just confusing you it's it's in in a way very similar to trying to learn all the languages of the world at the same time. In many cases, it's actually better to spend a little bit of focus time on one thing to settle into the structure of a language, even in, in a spoken language, before you move on to the next thing. That will let you se settle, and then I promise you, at some point you will get to this insight that, well, I kind of get how this is working. It's maybe I should do something else now, and then you can move move over. I mean, most of the senior coworkers that I have, there is like almost no problem transitioning. It's not like they can code as well in every language. It's just that they know how to code so well that they you know understand that oh, if you work in Python or you're working PHP, well, yeah, the syntax is going to be different and there are going to be a few things they're going to have to look up, but they can still produce a working program because they already have those core skills. And those are the things that are the most important to, especially to junior software developers. So what I want you to take away from this is that in this scenario, if you find yourself in a company where there's a lot of movement and you're switching stacks quite frequently, as this subscriber is, I highly recommend to you to ask yourself this question. Because fundamentally, it's not a bad thing to try a lot of different tools. Because as I said, if, you're, if you want to switch to a different company that is using a different language, it doesn't always matter if you have used that specific language. It just matters how good you are at those core skills, how le likely is, because that's what they're going to look for. Most of the companies are looking for people who can <clears throat> either lead or like push things if you're a master of the stack that's a very good thing of course but in many cases they're just looking for someone to be able to do the job I'll give you an example my current job is in Scala I've never worked in Scala like I completely botched the my code interview and I showed them like I don't know a fucking client of Scala but I've been working in Java for quite some time and they said fine that's okay because we know that these are very similar languages and you will pick up Scala in just a few weeks and I go yeah sure and then I got the job. The same thing will happen for you, I promise you. It's not always going to be that way, but it's very likely that that's going to happen as long as you have those core coding skills. So if you're in that environment where you're switching around a lot and you enjoy it, stick with it. Is as long as you feel like you're actually getting what you're doing. If you don't, if you feel like you don't really get what's going on, or if you don't have the time to settle in your knowledge, that's a very bad environment because the learning is the focus. It has to be the focus in these early years. And if that is the case, then you should take a look at something in the subscriber's case, Java or C Sharp, or try to find a company where they're focusing on one specific stack, a product company or something like that. Because then at the very least, you're going to get the opportunity to get comfortable with one stack before you start moving around and testing all the other stuff that's around. Have a great day.